Blue Bombers back to back with BC a team that it looks like they are going to have to fight for the final playoff spot with the crossover first down and Fred Reed has nothing up the middle into the grasp of Chip Cox well, that's just it. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers, you know, we talked about Fred Reed leading the league in rushing. They had the number two receiver coming in and Terrence Edwards. They have the leading sacker or in the sacks department. I don't know if sacker's a word. <laughs> and Philip Hunt, but a team that only has three wins to show for it. So a team that you look at and think, if they do get into the playoffs, could be dangerous. Big play here. They've got back-to-back -back two and outs, and they try to convert right. a little shovel ahead. Fred Reed not going to get there. It's three straight two and outs for the Bomber offense as we check in with Sarah Orleski. Chris, we saw in that first half the job that Greg Carr did, 163 yards and two touchdowns. Well, he's been out so far with an injured right shin. He had it iced up, and we saw it taped up, but currently he has taken the ice off, but the word from the Bombers is, is that his night is done. Well, that's too bad. What a remarkable debut in the Canadian Football League for Greg Carr. And unfortunately, done for the night, which seems to coincide with this bomber offense stalling. Hawkins taken down. Great downfield cover there. That's James Green, first man down. Welcome back to Winnipeg. It's been quite a Friday night. Montreal down by two. Has the football. They start... Deep in their own territory, and that pitch made up the 20-yard line by Kerry Carter. The fullback is just two to three. This is that time in the game again where the Winnipeg Blue Bombers who are trying to find a way to win, trying to find a way to win some of those close games you mentioned off the top. 0 for 5 in games that were decided by seven or less points. Well, how do you find a way to win? Alignment, assignment, execution. Stay disciplined. Sounded like Schultz. <laughs> Second and seven, big rush. They knock it out of his hands. It's loose. And it's a Winnipeg touchdown. Joe Lopendon. Well, it was one of those defensive ends for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I believe Odell Willis, he's going to be on the right of your screen. He's working on Jeff Parrott, comes around the edge. It is number 40, and he's the guy who's going to strip the ball. Lined up perfectly, executed his assignment, and the execution outstanding for the Bombers. Well, they've been a sack nightmare this year, and this time a forced fumble by Odell Willis. Wilbendon, the touchdown, and we'll get a challenge, and I think I know why. There was a kick there to forward the football, and can you advance it after the kick by off the foot of Dorian Smith is what might be the challenge. Well, well you can. Now, now let's take a look. Or, or was Tressman wondering if Anthony Calvillo's arm was in a forward passing motion? Here comes the play again. Odell Willis off the edge. I don't think there is no way that he was trying to throw in a, in a throwing motion. But you can advance the ball in the CFL by kicking it forward as long as it doesn't go out of bounds. So even if this ball is kicked forward, it can be advanced and can be recovered by the Bombers. If you kick it deliberately on Montreal bounce. is challenging the ruling on the field. They're saying that the player kicked the ball and a player who ahead of him recovered it. We'll review the play. So was Loban not ahead of the player. There was a uh, touchdown right, last year in a BC right? Saskatchewan game that should not have counted because right. the kick was made and it was recovered by a player who was ahead of the the kicker would if you would it was an inadvertent kick off the foot of Dorian Smith but looks like Joe Lovenot's behind and that this touchdown should stand yeah that's what I was alluding to if you if you kick the ball I mean your players that are on side are obviously eligible to to recover it if you kick it out of bounds it's the other team's ball the opposition's football and it didn't look to me live like there was anyone in front 
Joe Lovenod's got to replay it now. Was I behind? I don't <laughs> think I was. I think I'm okay. Odell. Trying to get that time of year, late September. The steam rolling off the back. <laughs> <laughs> Great shot. It's always better when it's off a middle linebacker. After review, the Winnipeg player did not kick the ball. We're in the field stands. Hunter will be charged for second half timeout. Well, it hit his foot, and what they're calling there is that, first of all, Lobendon was on side. Second of all, Dorian Smith didn't well, deliberately kick it he wasn't a Ray kicking Marshall motion it hit his leg bounced forward recovered ball in legal play and the defense that had had trouble corralling Montreal in this second half has come up with a huge play to tip this game back in Winnipeg's favor a nine-point bomber lead for the Canadian Football League Rona doing it right Lots of time left. The way they're scoring tonight, 12.22 to go. But Winnipeg has a nine-point lead. Here's the newcomer, Leroy Van. Up across the 40 before he's wrestled down. Pierre-Luc Labbe, the Quebec City native with the tackle. Pretty good coverage team, and Luc Labbe has a fumble recovery and 10 special teams tackles coming in and the unsung heroes on the teams and, and an area of the field that that paul lapolis wanted to see improvements remember toronto had an 80-yard touchdown return by chad owens a week ago they wanted to shore that up third year man out of sherbrooke making the play and now anthony calvino and Hawkins out of the backfield spins forward to the 45 Andrew Hawkins has four again. Hawkins, Brian Bratton, bigger part of the offense without Kerry Watkins, but Ben Cahoon has not been a big part of the offense tonight. Well, you know, he, he's been about what he's been all year. I mean, and, and again, this is an example of Mark Tressman not wanting to go out of his way just to get Ben Cahoon a record or a thousand catches. Used to be his call on second and six, but they're going to S.J. Green. He's got another catch. Working against LeVar Glover on the corner. You Touchdown know, earlier. When Anthony Calvillo was stripped on that last series by Odell Willis, he went off to the sideline and, and was looking at his thumb and working that right hand, that throwing hand. And this time down at the bottom of your screen, watch the accuracy on this throw. And the reason I bring up that thumb is because clearly it's fine. Little stop and go move here. And he throws it to the outside shoulder so S.J. Green can just turn his body. Again, great body control as the ball arrives. 28 for S.J. Green. They see over 70% completion tonight. And there's Ben Cahoon, his third catch of the night. Number 998 for number 86. Well, he had to grab that one. He, he had to snag that one in traffic because a couple of linebackers closing hard on the veteran. He just stabs it quickly. The timing on that little rub route, it was off. Andrew Hawkins kind of hesitated off the line. The timing was off, and Ben Cahoon knew he didn't have a very big window. Said he's made a career for 13 years uh, on people who underestimate me. Two away from 1,000. Right now, the primary objective, second and four for Calvillo. And the pass is delivered low to Coburn, who has the catch. Very close to the first down. Mark Tressman would like to measurement either way, just to give himself some time to consider the next couple of plays. And just a chain link or two short, so it'll be third down. And Adrian McPherson and the Jumbo team will come on for Mark Trussman. 
Ben Cahoon is a is a master at working off those picks and, and, and having other receivers that are running their routes kind of clear out for him. He's made a career out of that little timing issue with Andrew Hawkins, a newcomer, but he did make the catch and now he's got his team poised for a third down play here to try and move the chains. McPherson and didn't need much. He's got it. Adrian McPherson, 6'3", 220 falling forward to move the chains. Well, he's right on the doorstep of a thousand catches and if I were to make a guess, it would be at least half of them off pick plays just like this. Now, we put Kerry Watkins in who was injured, but this is what he likes to do. If Jamel Richardson for the inside runs his route, he'll pick the halfback and Cahoon works off that. It could be the wide receiver. In this case, we drew Watkins, but it could be Brian Bratton, and he works off that pick and rub to get back to the outside. Ben Cahoon's made a living off this rub run. Cahoon stays on the sidelines, first and ten, and the screen is knocked down. Odell Willis goes vertical. And he's made an impact here in the second half. Nice got knocked down there. Let's take a look at where Ben Cahoon is in his great career. To join Terry Vaughn, the only two receivers in CFL history with a thousand yards or more. And Ben Cahoon stays healthy throughout this season he will pass Terry Vaughn big play here second and ten Hawkins takes the swing brought down at the 20 Joe Lopendon drops Hawkins four yards short you know Ben Cahoon saw something and what he saw was a blitz and had he got the attention of his buddy and his quarterback and Anthony Calvillo is saying blitz coming blitz coming that's Javon Johnson he goes into blitz and Cahoon is now working in some space for at first down level and Anthony Calvillo went the opposite way and they're gonna have to kick a field goal the third and four trying to cut the lead to six points From 27 yards up. And Damon Duvall strokes that through. Just over eight minutes to go. A six point bomber lead. Atlantic game live coverage begins here on TSN at 11.30 a.m. Eastern. You're on the West Coast, get up for breakfast and enjoy some football at 8.30 Pacific time. Can't wait to get out to Atlantic Canada. A little lobster on the menu tomorrow night. Stephen Giles. Downfield. Terrence Edwards. And it's almost intercepted. And Corey Watson and Terrence Edwards in the neighborhood. And Mark Estell close by for Montreal. Yeah, I'm not sure one of those two receivers ran the wrong route because uh, play is not designed to have two receivers that close because what it does is it draws another defender into the area so Stephen Giles was looking all the way to Terrence Edwards crossing the field I have to believe it was Watson on the outside that was running the wrong route there and bringing the defender with him so second and ten from the 35 Giles directing traffic Brock Ralph in motion and Giles up the flat to Reed wide open and he's got a first down I think this has been, and, and this is not a stretch to say when you look at the numbers, but it's been Stephen Giles' best game as a pro because, you know, he, he goes to his third read there, strong arms it out to Fred Reed, and gives him a chance to move the chains. That, that was composure in the pocket in a key situation for Stephen Giles. 12 for Reed, the first down. And back in the hands of... Reed and a good tackle there by the middle linebacker Shea Emery. It looked like Fred Reed was injured on the play too. He, he could tell by the way he went down that that Emery was on his back. It wasn't a horse collar. 